How you doing? Hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> this is Ellie. Hello. <laughs> you did it. Uh, it had to happen one day. Uh, yes, so it is, what date is it? March 29th? Lost all track of time. I've lost all track of time. It's, I feel like yeah, yesterday I, I said 28th. paid on Friday. That's the 27th. It's now <laughs> Sunday. It's the 29th. It's the 29th of March. Look how quick I am with numbers. Which means that we are on day nine uh -huh. of lockdown. It really is all blurring into one now. Um, so yes, uh, we have been at this for well over a week. <laughs> well over a week. Well, to be fair, I say that because we were sort of partially trying to at best sort of lock down and be kind of isolated before the official news came out that we kind of had to. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're a week into a official, a week and a bit into official, but yeah, everybody's kind of been uh, locking down for a little bit longer than that. Most people anyway. Uh, so there's a couple of things that we want to talk about today. Um, and I think it's important. Normally I would try and start with what's going on outside, mm -hmm. but like three podcasts straight now, there's been some stuff that I've wanted to say and I haven't got round to. So in case anybody is on tenterhooks, Wanting to know what I want to say about personal hygiene. <laughs> I think now is the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so uh, I think there's like a stark contrast going on. What is that look? What? I'm just really intrigued what you have to say I about I know, I think hygiene. he's really worried. Because I'm sat quite close to her, so... I'm still yeah. willing to sit here. It's like, it's like well, if, no, if by I... the end of it, like, we're doing podcasts like this. Yeah, but am I, am I going to be willing to sit here after I hear this information? Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, no, I've been very good. I've been, like, very hygienic. Um, uh, but, yeah. Uh, there's a there's sort of two categories of people at the moment. There are there are people who are locking down on their own, and people who are locking down with people. Uh, and of that sort of those two categories, there's subsets. But basically, uh, what I seem to be noticing from conversations I'm having with people is uh, the rules on personal hygiene, or at least the habits that you've built up on personal hygiene have sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit uh, just out of habit because like for example for me I bath uh, loads I spend ages in the bath because it, it helps with my fibro so I soak my muscles in the bath so I probably have a bath every day or at least most days and on the days that I don't I'll be having a shower because I'll be getting up and going to work and before I go to work I always have a shower so that I can wash my hair and stuff so I don't look like I've been dragged through a hedge um, so sort of accidentally sticking to personal hygiene rules for those reasons. Now, because I'm not going to work, I'm not getting up and having a shower so that I can wash and dry my hair ready for work, because why would I? So um, there's sort of habits that I, I haven't done. So then you've had to kind of be more conscious about, oh, okay, well, at some point today I should have a shower. Is now a good time for a shower? Okay, I'll, I'll go have a shower now. Um, and those sorts of things. Or like, I've been having loads of baths, but that's meant that I haven't necessarily been washing my hair. So then I've noticed that my hair needs a wash. So then I've had to make a specific effort. Um, so I've been perfectly clean and not stinky, but maybe having slightly greasy, gross hair. Um, but uh, probably for the first like half of the first week, I was going a little bit feral and not giving a damn. Hmm. And then actually I've noticed that sort of getting up, having a shower, putting a face on, even though I'm not going out, uh, it's kind of been quite good for my mental health of kind of feeling like, okay, normality is still here. Um, that kind of thing. I think it's sort of helpful just to sort of put like, I've, I've used it previously about my mental health sort of thing when it comes to putting face on, but sometimes, sometimes it's war paint and sometimes it's a costume. And, but it basically, it's sort of the ritual of getting, up and painting your face on and sort of deciding what face you want to have is quite a potent thing sort of mentally when you're feeling like you don't really want to see people put a face on and then you can handle it kind of thing um so there's a lot of stuff goes on with putting on makeup it's not just to look pretty necessarily but yeah um but uh so that sort of started the conversation with a few people about personal hygiene now the people who are locking down on their own this is a different category and I've known a few of these and I've only spoken to ladies about this so perhaps you can weigh in on what the chaps are doing. Masturbating furiously. <laughs> Probably. Why are they furious about it? <laughs> so angry. <laughs> so angry. Self-care guys, you can be loving. Yeah. Be loving, it's fine. I, um, I, mean, yeah. if I, I mean if I was on my own right now I wasn't with you and I wasn't filming things mm. I imagine I'd still be wearing the same t-shirt that I put on on Tuesday. Right. 
Like, but now I'm like aware that people might see me, and I should make a token effort to right. wash my hair occasionally. To be then, fair, I think I probably yeah, t-shirt like t-shirt on, and so that people. I don't wouldn't have changed the same thing every day my pajamas as frequently as I have. Oh. <laughs> I'd probably still be wearing... I'd be having a bath, but then putting the same pajamas back on because they're comfy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess so, so sort of like things fall by the wayside. Oh, like teeth brushing is always a thing that I do sort of before I leave the house. But obviously if you're not leaving the house, you need to sort of think... Remember right, to actually brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Mm. Um, so I've sort of had to be a bit more because there's habits that always worked for me for that but like you have to be more conscious of them because your normal routine is out of sync now people who are shacking up on their own or are with people who aren't going to see them intimately let's say um a friend of mine put that, that's, that's a good one. Intimately. intimately um a friend of mine sort of said hey guys i've got a plan and i was like do tell uh, and she's like right I'm in lockdown. I'm not going to see my boyfriend for at least five weeks. At least. I got two belly hairs and I'm just going to let them grow and see what happens. And I was like, this is brilliant. Let me know. And then another friend in the same chat piped up and she went, ah, oh, maybe now's the time to let Spike grow. And I was like, who, who and what is Spike? Spike is a chin hair that she has that she always like plucks as soon as it is visible. But she's like, now I can just see what happens. And I kind of like this. I'm kind of like embrace this. Uh, I'm not telling you where any of my, ra I don't have Spike, but I might have other Spikes, who knows. Uh, but I'm shacked up with someone, so we don't need to go down that path. But it's interesting to sort of take it as a sign of liberation of just like, maybe I don't have to do the certain, like it's keep clean, Keep clean, wash your hands, wash your bits, all of that stuff. But maybe we don't need to be doing the like shaving and plucking and worrying about that sort of stuff as much. If nobody's going to see it and you're literally on your own, maybe it's time to let things go a little bit and see how it goes and enjoy it and embrace it. I am with you. I am not talking about myself. Well, um, to be fair, I've not shaved since I've been home on Monday. And can I, you tell? No, can you probably tell? not. You probably I can't. can in person, but... See, the thing is, there no, isn't, there on the is screen a... it looks like there's no hair. There but is a shadow there. Person, basically, I've never really been able to grow proper facial hair, but I, I, it just grows very thin and patchy, so I still have to... Sh just enough that I still have to shave, still have that chore. And if I'm going to do a gig and I want to be on stage in front of people and look my best, I still have to shave, but it doesn't actually ever grow in to a beard or look proper but I've just kind of gone right well let's just leave it and and see what happens at you're gonna end up with such a weird beard because it's just gonna be all under here and well, you're just gonna minute. have a beard but no facial because I'm quite young looking anyway and it's just growing very thin I think I just look like a French exchange student <laughs> <laughs> oh bless yeah. oh I don't want people to think I've shacked up with a French exchange student for lockdown oh je m'appelle return to my family that's in France. I'm Francais. <laughs> no, that's not how French works. She regret I've been kidnapped. <laughs> by, and she's making me do a vlog. But, but and she also... changes the settings on Facebook so my parents can't see it. I've also destroyed your ability to speak your own language. Uh, how did I do that? Je voudrais parler, parler en français. Parlons en français. <laughs> parler en français. Good at tea. Good at tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, so, uh, so I've shacked up with a French exchange student. Um, he seems quite happy about it. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I hope his parents don't bring him home. But it's fine. I, I wouldn't want to be here on my own. But I, like, yeah, I don't think I would go to the lengths of uh, basically taking a child captive. I don't How think it'd be that bad. Did you have access to a French exchange student in the first place? I don't know. I've never needed one. Maybe I maybe I don't have access. Who says I had access? I, 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 yeah, <laughs> tissue of lies. You're crumbling under the pressure. She's got a stack of French exchange students in a cupboard. <laughs> Do they are they stackable? Yeah, <laughs> like Lego in, interlocking. <laughs> okay, right, fine. Listen, uh, I'm not prejudiced, but the French are interlocking, and it's weird. Um, <laughs> so. Okay. So, uh, in terms of the other camp on the uh, personal hygiene, when it comes, and I don't want to put people into gender categories here, I'm just talking, the people I've spoken to about this just happen to have all been uh, women that have been talking about this, um, but uh, 
the other camp have been, I've had so much more time to sort of look after myself. So I've been like giving myself full on manicure pedicures. I've been giving myself face masks. I've been doing like body scrubs. And actually I've never looked better in my life because I've got the time to do it. And that is an interesting other side of the coin that is sort of quite nice and good self care stuff. Um, we are not, well, you don't know about this, um, we made a plan, which actually I kind of alluded to at the end of our first podcast about pl weird plans that we have made, which were not sexual. Uh, one of the weird plans that we made was that we were going to have a bit of a spa day, which was basically going to be, I was going to do all of the things, uh, like some face masks, pore strips, I think I covered this yesterday actually, but we're going to do all of that to Chris. I have discovered several couples have also made the same plan. And my friends who I've mentioned previously who are currently sort of stuck in Thailand, Good news on that front, they are coming home, um, they, they, they're back in Bangkok and now they're just having to hole up in a hotel outside Bangkok because they're on lockdown. So what they did to prepare for lockdown was buy face masks and bubble bath and loads of beer so that they could just have a little lock-in in a hotel room and just basically have a drunken spa day. Um, and that's happening. Uh, when, depending on how long this goes on for, we have just debated, I, I might, cut your hair which is sort of a travesty because his hair is so lovely and lustrous and gorgeous but um we are gonna somewhat. get bored at some point and that might happen um i have hair trimmers uh i currently already cut hair but only my dad's and he literally does not care what it looks like <laughs> uh but i care what this looks like so i will do my best but i think that is probably gonna happen at some point um so this weird sort of sense of mutual pack grooming seems to be going on and maybe it's like a sort of side effect of um we're not getting as much i don't approve of whatever this is that's happening but it's um grooming you just I, I, that sort of suggests there's stuff to pick. Just, yeah, just get my fleas out. Just... But I wonder if this weird urge to sort of... I, it's very hard to ignore that. Uh, to sort of groom and pamper and preen each other is because we're not sort of seeing lots of lots of people who are sort of having normal physical human contact with. So now the human physical contact that we're having with each other has gone into a strange, like, primordial, primordial primeval, like ape-like grooming, mutual grooming, just like, it's okay, we're all okay, let's just look after each other, it's fine. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, like I said, this was going to get weirder and weirder, and it is. Um, so I don't even think I came to a conclusive point on that, but it is interesting how personal hygiene seems to be taking various routes with various people due to the type of quarantine slash lockdown that they are having. Mm. So, so if you've, if you've stopped taking care of your own personal hygiene, why not tell us in the comments section? Yeah, let's find out. Let us know if you've stopped washing your bits. <laughs> also, please keep washing your bits. Keep washing your bits. Um, <laughs> Just yeah. for your own sake. So, um, now that I've got that out of my system because I really wanted to, um, I will go slightly into the little bit of real world stuff that yeah. I wanted to talk about because it's kind of important to sort of put this in context with the rest of the world. Um, so a couple of things, but I will do them quickly as well. Well, I'll do one grim one quite quickly. Um, yeah, there's no real way to avoid it, but you can just skip ahead 30 seconds. But uh, today's... Uh, death toll in the UK is the first time it's broken the 200 mark uh, and literally just a few days ago we were looking at sort of 30, 40, 50 mark and now it's 200 ish uh, and so that's a worry um, so it is growing but we knew it was going to be uh, in other similar news uh, as we've mentioned a few times we're in Newport which has currently been the epicentre for where it's all kicking off in Wales uh, today is the third day in a row where our de our new cases have gone down. So maybe we were just an early sort of springing off point and it's calming down, fingers crossed. Um, today was the first time we don't have more cases than anywhere else in Wales. We're second to Cardiff today. Oh. Um, so maybe things are slowing down in Newport. Uh, so that's something. Um, in terms of today's press conference, uh, it, I didn't watch it uh, live. I caught the tail end of it later to just sort of recap the important points. Um, 
few things. Uh, the main one uh, was just uh, listening to Jenny Harris. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Harris or Harris. It's spelt Harris, but it seems to be being said Harris. But anyway, she's the Deputy Chief Medical Officer. Uh, she was taking part of today's... Uh, she mentioned sort of passingly that she thinks there's going to be... Well, we shouldn't look at going back to normal for at least six months. Now, that wasn't to say that we will be in this level of lockdown for six months, but we're definitely not going to be 100% back to normal before six months is up. The plan seems to be to sort of um, go quite strict and then release and then go quite strict and then release so that we sort of uh, taper as, as it spreads so that gradually everybody gets it, but we don't get too many people getting the virus at the same time. Uh, so th the, the passing comment was looking at probably six months, might be October, and you just sort of go, ah, March at the moment. Like, we might be doing this till October, because your brain does go straight to, oh, we're going to do this until October. And dear God, can you imagine what the blogs are going to be like then? They are going to be insane. It's going to be interpretive dance mm. and uh, face painting. Uh, he's he's going to have very interesting hair. Um, he'll be plucking my eyebrows as I speak and I won't even notice that it's odd. Like, there's going to be a whole world of crazy happening by then. If if we stay, Can you imagine if we stayed on full lockdown and we don't actually get to speak to any other people in person for six months? I mean, oh God, 12 weeks was feeling like a lot. <laughs> I sort of hadn't really thought about it until someone say, said 12 weeks puts you in early June. Mm. And that really feels like a long... I'm glad I'm here with you, but like I miss going out. I miss yeah, I miss seeing my friends. Going to the shops, being able to go to a pub and have a drink, or order some some just fair like fries. I'm so curious as to like this is so weird and so abnormal to normal habits that will we go back to normal? Like, will normal be normal after this? Because I sort of think like if you've done twelve weeks of strict lockdown and then they're like, oh, okay, now you're allowed to go out. Certain businesses are allowed to open for like a week, but then we'll close them again and that that kind of thing. Like, I, like will we all just be like automatically keeping our distance and not... Because I sort of feel like as soon as I see one or two of my friends and definitely one or two of my family, I'm going to hug the life out of them. Like, I really want to hug. Like, you've been given really great hugs. They've been great. But I really want to hug my mum. I really want to give my gran a kiss. I want to hug my dad, even though he will hate it. I want to hug a lot of people. And I wonder if it's going to go so long without seeing people that when we do see people, it's going to be weird. Like, is it, it going to be weird? weird? And I I think um, I already, as I've been getting older, have been less tolerant of the behaviour of strangers. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> right, yeah. you know, like when you're walking in the streets and... Like someone stops abruptly in front of you. Mm. Oh, and yeah. in your head, you're just like, oh, fuck off. Oh, God, and yeah, I you always, get, like, the things feel, you say in your head, and then and you yeah. hear yourself, and you're like, whoa. And I feel like I'm about, the top. I feel like I was already about six months away from just saying those things out loud. <laughs> you know, just, you just, say, you just prick. shouting at strangers in the street. Oh, place. just stop, shall we, you and, fucking prick. <laughs> and, it's, and it's weird, like, the nicer my life has become with you. But, like, I, I, my, I did continue to become more of a curmudgeon in the real world, <laughs> irrespective. So, but that was when you could just go out and it was normal. Now now we're looking at each other as, like, disease carriers and things. <laughs> like, we'd be even more annoyed if someone gets in our way or oh, coughs man. and doesn't cover their mouth or, or whatever it might be. I think be. that's going to be the new proper social prayer. Like, someone who, like, not even just sneezes, but, like, who sneezes into their hat. Like, because usually, before all of this, you would go, oh, <clears throat> oh, sorry. And nobody would think oh, that was in your hand. Like, you would just think, oh, thank you for covering your mouth. But then you're touching everything. But now I think people are going to be hyper aware, which is good, but mm. it's also weird. Well, um, like, but yeah, I think people sneezing or coughing. When I was still having... Or even just it. touching things unnecessarily in Stop public. Stop touching things in public, guys. Um, definitely don't touch me. You'll go blind. But, <laughs> um, things... <laughs> when I was still commuting to work, I don't know if I mentioned this on the vlog before, but there was a day in the sort of last week that I was still commuting to work. There was a day I had to catch the train from Newport to Cardiff and there was a guy across the aisle from me on the train just coughing a lot, like into his jacket, but coughing a lot, a lot, like persistently, like the sort of cough where he should be at home. And also he was watching a video on his phone 
with the volume up and no headphones. What a prick. What a prick, right? And and I just like... Just one of those might, things makes him a prick. It might be that he had allergies, you know? Maybe he knew he had allergies and he knew it wasn't a virus. He just always but has those allergies. But I you just don't think, know that. I don't know that. And I just think, like, I don't have any faith in someone who's watching a video on a train without headphones. That's already a cunt's trick, isn't it? <laughs> and so... Yep. You just sort of go, he's probably... He probably doesn't care about other people yeah, or other people's perceptions distancing. of he's him. Probably happy and to like, yeah. put other people at risk doesn't give a shit, you know. And I think that's a behaviour uh, we're going to be very yeah. wary of. I'm also interested to see what happens in terms of live entertainment. Mm. And not just live entertainment. Live entertainment, yes, but also like cinemas. Um, because oh. like, do, do, will do you people just strip out the chairs and have fewer of them and space them apart more? Well, no, I think they'll still want to make as much money as possible. But I, but, well, if, but if it's like you can't have as many people in a small space, maybe they'll make them really super luxury chairs. Well, I'm like just, they do in the View Cinemas in Cambridge. Sorry, more... I don't think this is a thing across all View Cinemas, but our local View Cinema has turned all of the seats into the like premier seats, and it's great. But fuck those guys, because I'm a Cineworld loyalist till I die. Oh no, Cineworld's one of Cut the Cut me, I bleed Cineworld. What? One of the companies that we're not allowed to like anymore. It's Cineworld. What's, what's Cineworld, Cineworld were a massive pile of bastards to Why? their employees. Um, there was a really good list, which if you just Google it, because I don't have the link handy, uh, but there, you know we were talking about there were a few companies that we wanted to mm. boycott after this. Cineworld is on there. Oh, because they basically just fired a load of people when they... before they Admittedly, it was before they knew about the 80% thing, but they just fired loads of people... Uh, and then didn't sort of take them back or didn't put any... Provi- like, they, they basically went, oh, well, we're not going to be earning money, so screw you all! And just, um, they had a lot of people on zero as contracts, so they just laid them off. Uh, they basically, they weren't great. There were, com- there were companies out there that were worse, but there was, a good, there was a good list of, like, they had them rated green, amber, or red, and unfortunately, Sony World were in the red category for not looking after both their customers and their employees during this time. So we might have to switch to view. Oh, do they have a loyalty card system? Probably. Do they sell ice cream sundaes? I don't know. This is tra- this is, these are dark times. <laughs> oh no, it'll be something other than Baskin Robbins. This Whatever will you do? <laughs> this is the worst news I had. <laughs> oh God, and I didn't know it was something time. I should have broken to you more gently you than really, that. Yeah. Well, it's okay. You could just throw away your principles and keep going. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're, we're not going to Weatherspoons. We never went to Sports Direct. I'm. No, we're not Virgin. We're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to change our TV supplier, supplier after this. Um, because yeah, we normally have Richard Virgin. Branson. Yeah, I'm Stop not playing for private medicine, won't we? Um, <laughs> We couldn't afford that in the first so, place. We can't even afford to go to an NHS dentist. No. Um, but, yeah, no, so we'll be boycotting a lot of things. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe I'm allowed one exception. Hey, we'll uh, nobody's policing it. You God, can do what you is, like. This is very new information. I'm still processing. Well, maybe I mean, we'll so look into it. They might have revisited. It's one of the stages of grief, isn't it? Bargaining. Oh, well, I think you're currently in denial. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, denial, so, bargaining, depression, anger and acceptance. Oh, possibly not in that order. Watch out, because you've got to deal with all of those in the <laughs> weeks and days. Um, but the point I was trying to make before we got sidetracked is, like, after all this, will people be, like, just really keen to go out to the cinema and have that communal experience and go and see a film on a big screen again? Or will they be like, well, no, we, we t- we've got Netflix. Turns out we didn't need it. We don't need that, and it's not oh, really I in the budget. Not. And the same goes for things like live music, live comedy. Will people be rushing out to see it? Or will people just be a bit yeah, like, do you know what? It is... I've got Netflix specials, except people have to go and see comedy. Yeah, you need to have an to audience for those. new Netflix specials. Yeah, new uh, material new, for those not just comics. Netflix, you know, Amazon Prime, Next Up, you know, other well, services are available. But, you know, in order for there to be comedy shows for you to watch at home... People need to be going to them live. Yeah, those comedians need to hone their art and hone their material in gigs yeah, in so order not to just create the famous ones. You need gigs to be that live, are ones that local, get recorded for that sort live of stuff. Comedy, local um, acts and same goes for the, like theatre and stuff, I guess. Because if you 
take the audience element out of theatre, then that's just film and television. And, like, I love theatre. I love live theatre. Mm. Uh, and, like, well, this is a thing that quite a lot of people, and a phrase that keeps sort of standing out to me that lots of people are saying, and I've be, I've caught myself saying it as well in, like, emails to customers, because, I, like I said, a couple of days ago, I had to sort of email out everybody who had existing bookings and say, they're not happening. So it's up to you if you want to just have your money back or if you want me to sort of keep your deposit uh, and then you can just rebook when you're back or you just want money, your money back or do you just want me to keep the money and you will rebook. It's all up to you. Um, most people have been really cool and they've kind of said, look, we'd already given you the money. Uh, when this all reopens, it gives us an incentive to book something. So we'll come back to you uh, also, when we reopen, which is great. Thanks, guys. Also, in terms of supporting local businesses during this time, uh, Ellie won't say this herself, but gift vouchers are still available for the Newport Escape Rooms. I think I have said they that. They are. Have you said that on here? <laughs> I think I oh, have. Okay. Well, oh yeah, are. I am not and, above asking for money. And they are. <laughs> they are really good escape rooms. Both rooms. Check them out. Go and. Oh ah, well, when we do reopen, there will to, be a new you? room to launch as well, yes, which is exciting. Because be third room. We and... built it. It was ready to go. We were play testing, and then all this kicked off. So it's just a new room ready to go, and it's all just sitting there. After this, dusty. people will need things to look forward to. Book yourself, get yourself a gift voucher for an escape room. We don't know when they're going to be open, but those vouchers are going to they be... They will at some point. Yeah, and those vouchers will still work in yeah. the future, at that future point. So you can book it. You don't have to book a date now because we don't know it's all up in the air, but get the vouchers. Go and Bless buy, you. buy the gift vouchers for Newport Escape Rooms. Please, please do. Doing but... yourself a favour. Really <laughs> good escape rooms. Thanks, Chris. I didn't ask him to do that, but he's very Other well trained, isn't he? people would vouch for them. <laughs> I could give you, uh, I won't hear, but I could give you a list of names of people who would vouch for them as being good escape rooms. So Thank you. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the same Including goes for lots of... people who work in other escape rooms. <laughs> that is true, work. actually. Um, but yeah, the thing I was going to say about that is that I keep catching myself saying, when things go back to normal, and I do sort of think that maybe things aren't going to go back to normal. I think certain things might change permanently. And not necessarily for the worse. I think there's some things that will be much better. Um, I think, like, much increased sort of flexibility of working from home, which actually has been a major barrier to people um, with any kind of health conditions or mobility issues. Um, suddenly employers sort of making it possible for you to work from home shows that it was kind of always possible. It just wasn't in their interest to do so previously because they could just hire someone who could come to the office. And that's going to be bad um, for the environment yeah. and just traffic on the roads and all sorts of things where yeah, we can make and, many people commuting every day. Yeah, and maybe just the way people communicate. Like, um, maybe people will be more inclined to have a group little FaceTime chat rather than just messaging, which feels a little bit more like a human connection. I've, like, I hate talking on the phone. Uh, I never liked it, but then sort of back in my anxiety days, it became a real trigger and I, I just don't like it. My phone ringing unexpectedly makes my heart jump into my throat. And then if it's someone who knows me really well and they're ringing me, I'm like, well, you know better than this. What are you doing? What is wrong? And they're like, hey, yeah, uh, just can't chat. I'm driving. I'm just like... Don't, oh, don't do this to me uh, but FaceTiming for me I don't mind it I like it because I can see their face they can see my face I can see that they look okay and I'm like they're not unhappy or upset um, I think it comes from a sort of I worry that I've said the wrong thing and I can't see how they react so any tiny silence and then I go oh I've said the wrong thing and then my brain just explodes um, <laughs> certain things like this I think will be good because also I've been reaching out to people I don't speak to very yeah. often more to check that they're okay like I've mentioned friends traveling who I can go months without talking to I've made sure I've sort of gone hey how are you handling this what's going on on your end are you okay cool great those sorts of habits are great habits to keep and I hope we keep them um, I also hope that respecting and appreciating our NHS is something that we massively appreciate and um, fund heavily we are at 29 uh, minutes okay we're at 29 minutes so i will just tell you some stuff that i want to tell you tomorrow on the subject of the nhs i want to talk to you about a fetish website that has saved the day oh yes okay. uh, which is a tomorrow. good good lovely good heartwarming tomorrow, heartwarming and sexy story 
so look forward to that. Mm. Um, uh, any other things that we have missed? I was going to talk oh, about yes. Stuart Lee. Stuart Lee. Oh, I love trending. this. We'll talk about that tomorrow uh, as well. Yeah, he, I, well, I, I'll talk quickly about it now because he's trending on Twitter today in the UK uh, because he wrote a brilliant article about everything that's going on. If you don't know who Stuart Lee is, uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. Stuart Lee is one of my favourite stand-up He's comedians. one of mine too. He's brilliant. But he is also, when I say to people I do stand-up comedy, he's the stand-up comedian but he always asked who are your favourites, and I mentioned him, and they have no idea who he is. But he's really good. <laughs> Check him out. He's, he's got stuff brilliant. on Netflix and iPlayer and Amazon Prime. He's all over. Here's a quick quote from him just to end the vlog today, I guess. Uh, just a quote from him that says, anyone who doesn't like cats must be dead inside. Um, <laughs> which, True. That isn't really what the article today was about. It's from an old book. It doesn't really give the, the political tone of his articles, but I think it proves he's a good egg. Yeah, he is, I'm pretty sure, a good egg. That's probably a good point. Right, to okay. All right, bye guys. We will talk to you tomorrow. As ever, it has flown for us. I'm sorry if it dragged for you. Uh, but yeah, uh, you're That's still here, spirit. so... <laughs> All right, bye guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.